would you want to stitch felt? I'm going to share that with you, but first I'm Lori from Muffs Merino, and in this video I'm going to show you a felting technique where we begin stitching our felt halfway through the felting process so that we can achieve a stitched look on our felt. If you are someone who loves to embroider or are an embroidery pro or just love stitching and you love felting or you want to learn how to felt, then this technique might just be for you. You can create fantastic borders. You can attach other fiber elements to your felt for visual appealing effects and texture. You can use yarn to create strength and stitch beautiful patterns. You can use all kinds of different types of thread. You can use silk, you can use thick yarn, you could use art yarn and make amazing wacky felted hats. You could use yarn that doesn't felt but will be manipulated by the shrinkage. We are going to get to the stitching part very soon, but first, what the heck am I doing? I have been adding these felted loops to my felted pictures. As I show you new techniques, I am also improving my skill set by learning new techniques so that I can find my art style. If this is something you're interested in, you can check back in my other videos and follow along to see how I've improved and how you can also improve your own art style. Once you have laid out your canvas, you can begin adding your design. You do not have to add a design. You can simply begin felting your canvas. Once your fabric is partially felted, you can begin adding your stitches for a stunning stitched look. Before I get to the stitching, I will add my design. I have discovered a new technique that is a little bit different than pre-felt that allows me to gain more creative control. By laying out a yarn border, I can design basically any shape I want and fill it in. Opposed to the pre-felt, it is a little bit more difficult to cut out any shape I like. But with the yarn, I can simply lay it on my fabric and create any design. And so this has gotten me very excited about the future of my art style. Once you have completed your design and you have an idea of where you want to put your stitches, you can begin felting your project. With the design side facing down, roll your project on all four sides 30 times on each side for four rounds using your favorite felting method. After four rounds, your piece of felt should not be falling apart. You can pick it up and your design will not fall off and the piece of felt will not come apart. If you're making a large felt project, I really recommend that you make a sample piece of felt where you take the different yarns and you stitch them onto your fabric and felt it and complete that entire project so that you know what it's going to look like in the end on your bigger project and you are happy with the look. I have not done this and I am really hoping this beautiful blue merino wool yarn is going to look perfect for this piece of artwork that I am not quite sure what it is exactly, but it's something I drew up on a piece of paper and just decided it would have a cool stitched look. It kind of looks like a baby rattle or a baby bottle or a soother, I'm not really sure. You can begin stitching your fabric, and this is the most exciting part. This is where you can let your embroidery or stitching creativity go wild. You can really get creative at this point using different types of yarn, sparkly yarn, thick yarn, art yarn. There is another technique called shibori, where you stitch the yarn and you pull the fabric to make a bumpy and lumpy texture. And this is an amazing, stunning look. You can do so much with this. Shibori is for another day and another time. It's a complete channel on its own. Once you are done stitching, completely soak your felt. And add a little bit of soap. Using your dowel or pool noodle, begin rolling your felt 30 times on each side for one more round. You can now complete your felt project in any way you like to finish your felt, or you can use my method where I take my bubble wrap away and begin felting my felt right on the towel. This just provides extra grip and allows me to felt the piece more quickly. The grip allows me to really work my edges. 
I am also going to shape my felt by cutting it however I like. When should you cut and shape your felt? To me, this is up to you. You can cut and shape your felt whenever you feel like it is suitable for you. I'm a little bit of a nervous cutter and so I cut my felt almost at the end when it's quite felted. Plus through my experience I have learned that the felt can be shrunk so much more so to me there's enough time to really felt my edges. You might be a little bit more brave and you might want to cut your felt in the shape you like earlier. This will allow you to obtain beautiful edges where you do not need to work them as much at the end because they will work themselves through the felting process. I love working my edges and I love creating structural felt and to me this is one of the most important parts of felting. It's one of the most important parts of finishing your felt project. If you want beautiful results you will spend a lot of time finishing any type of artwork you create. Once you have completed your felt, and if there is a little bit of soap still in there, you can dip it in the water to rinse out the soap and then begin rolling your felt on a dry towel to finish it off. I hope there was something in this video that inspired you and and if there is, please share it in the comments. And don't forget to boop that like button and subscribe if you want to see more felting and fiber techniques. If you have come this far, thank you for watching this entire video. And if you are new here, my name's Lori from Muffs Merino, and my goal is to inspire, teach, and share everything I know with you so that you can find your art style and that you can begin creating stunning and prominent fiber art more quickly.